What's up everyone, Thralls Metal here once again. I'm the Crack Nick and I am back with some underrated albums. And this time, we're gonna go into some prog metal. Now I've been wanting to do this one for a while just because prog is kind of far reaching as far as like different subgenres that it touches on and I wanted to capture as much as that as possible in this list. Progressive death, progressive thrash, progressive sludge, progressive stoner metal, traditional progressive metal, it's all kind of there and I wanted to again kind of like touch on as many of those different subsets of prog metal as possible and even a little bit of prog rock just because that stuff in itself was almost kind of proto metal in a way. So of course we got 10 albums from 10 different bands here and I'm just gonna get right into it because these are some pretty awesome releases. First, Lazarus Bird. This was the Swedish band's final album, came out in 2008 on Relapse Records. Now this band started off as more of a technical death grind band and then slowly started to morph into a more progressive band, but their brand of prog metal was kind of different. It was very hardcore and there was a lot of still death metal involved in it and then adding elements of like Mastodon's style of prog metal and Tool and then even going back as far as like King Crimson and yes, but of course in a more extreme fashion. Vocals on here are really interesting because there's a two vocalist dynamic. The main frontman had this sort of hardcore death metal bellow, maybe like sludge metal sort of bellow all over the place. Sometimes it was like exceptionally low, sometimes he was shrieking his guts out. And then you had the bassist Jesper Liverod, who was a former member of Nossum, doing the clean vocals, which are these strange sort of spacey warbled vocals, kind of jello or surge from System of a Down, sort of like that odd vocal style. And it kind of gives it this weird spacey feel. Across the board, these songs are just wide-reaching in terms of the different stuff they touch on. I Exterminate the Eye, the bridge on that song sounds so Robert Frippish. Just the melodies and the harmonies with the more clean passages and the interesting jazzy drumming that's all over this album. And then you have Cripple God, which is an absolute banger of a song that just screams Mastodon like intensity, like circa remission or leviathan and then we watch the silver rain is almost kind of a tool song like very reminiscent of lateralis i love this album i mean as you can see this thing is beaten to shit because i have listened to it so many damn times back before i put stuff on my phone i think it is quite possibly their best album the album before dorigo i thought was very good and that was the big push i think more towards prog this solidified it and this is an absolute banger. Now, unfortunately, they broke up in 2009, and I believe they only reformed in 2018, possibly just for some reunion shows, but that did not last, and once again, they are no more. Which is sad, because this band's awesome, and this final piece of work is just absolutely kick-ass. So if you have never jammed this album, I strongly recommend picking this one up. Check out their other albums too, they're all really good, but I think this one stands out from the pack, at least in my mind, so yeah. Definitely check this one out. Wolverine, Still. This is the third album from the Swedish prog band. Came out on Candlelight Records in 2006. And this band's sound is very akin to stuff you'd hear with Opeth, Catatonia, or even Soen. Now, not talking about Opeth with the harsh vocals. In fact, there are really no harsh vocals on here or even really death metal moments. This is more straight up kind of gloomy, dreary, proggy, you know, depressive metal. Mainly, I think the comparisons to Soen and Catatonia are the big ones here. That has that kind of gloomy Catatonia energy, especially in their more recent releases. But also mixed in there, you still have nods to bands like Queensryche or Fate's Warning, some of that early prog sound. And what I really love on this is it is very melody centric. You have loads of guitar melodies, vocal harmonies, and really, really solid keyboards. Even some nice Hammond organ sections on here that I think were particularly good. The song Nothing More, I think, in here is one of the most dreary, melancholy songs out there, and it just kind of just captures this depressive mood. And then Sleepy Town actually kind of sounds like a Peter Gabriel song. Now, I know all this isn't screaming, this is prog metal, but it is prog metal. There are a lot of heavier sections on here, but it's nice and balanced out with a lot of soft, clean sections on here. It's all very well done. It's all very catchy. It may not be the heaviest album in this batch. I mean, it's heavier than some in this batch, but if you're a big fan of just really good songwriting and 
big vocal hooks and still very inventive musicianship definitely check this out check out the span's work i still need to get more of their stuff but this is the one that wrote me in and i think it is definitely underrated as hell so check it out the heart machine disclosure this is the lone full length from this band it was more international though i believe it was based in london this came out on sumerian records in 2012 and for starters this is the first place i ever heard the name alex rudiger which if you love really technical drummers that dude is on a short list of amazing session drummers that can step in your project for a modest amount of money and absolutely just light up a kit. Now I first heard about these guys when they were touring with the Faceless and I decided to check them out and what we have here is a really cool blend of technical death metal and progressive metal. And it's really balanced too, it doesn't extremely favor one side. You have clean vocals as well as harsh vocals, lots of like traditional prog passages and straight up tech death passages on here. The drum work is absolutely fantastic because again, it's Alex Rodinger and the guitar work done by Al Mu Min, I'm sorry if I'm screwing up your name, is amazing on here. It's very cynic-esque, but also very much along the lines of like necrophages and spots. And then he peppers in a lot of cool acoustic Middle Eastern melodies all over this. In fact, it even has sort of like a oud or a sitar effect on here. It definitely gives it that, you know, Middle Eastern feel. Pleading Keys was probably the song that really latched onto me. I love the chorus on it and the fact that there are these big hooky choruses on here mixed in with just brilliant technical play really makes this stand out for me. Since that's something I look for in technical music, I want to hear technical proficiency but still hear songwriting. It can't just be wankery. This album delivers in terms of really clever and well-written songs. Now, unfortunately, they broke up after this album, and I believe they tried to reform with different members not too long ago. I don't know how that went, since it is only the guitarist and then whoever else he's bringing in. Of course, Alex Rodinger went on to have a very successful career as a session drummer, joining in with a whole bunch of different bands. And the frontman on here ended up joining Raunchy and being their harsh vocalist slash clean vocalist, who's also doing clean vocals with their keyboardist. So he found another gig and I don't know what the bassist did on here, but they're still trying to reform this band, though I think it's still on hiatus. If he can get a lineup together and come out with something as good as this, I am 100% down for it. So if you've never jammed this band before, I strongly recommend checking them out. Mencia, Pyrophoric. This is the second album from this Athens-based progressive death metal band. This came out in 2012 on Indie Recordings and this is Definitely for fans of Gojira, but early Gojira. Like the first two albums, Terra Incognito and The Link, those two albums in particular sound very similar to this. There's more of a death metal feel on here and it's very groove oriented, much like again, early Gojira. That's driven by chugs, palm mutes, big breakdowns, and a really creepy atmosphere, which I don't think Gojira really went for, but this definitely has. The title track on here especially has this really kind of creepy crawling riff that kind of fades in and out and is just driven by this big bouncy chug. The vocals are definitely more death metal oriented, a little bit lower, kind of raspier growls. And I love the production here and the fact that it's more groove oriented and it doesn't really rely on blast beats and fiercely technical play, but more or less creating atmosphere and just these really interesting transitions and more basing it on clever songwriting than, you know, technical play. It kind of makes this stand out a bit. Now, the status of this band is unknown right now. I believe they have one other full length. I might be wrong there. And I know a couple of members are in a black and thrash band called Satan's Wrath, which I definitely have heard of. And I really liked at least the one release I have by them. Being a fan of older Gojira, I would definitely like to hear more from this band, especially since Gojira has progressed on and moved their sound into different territory. Not that that's bad. I really like newer Gojira, but I kind of miss that old sound and it's cool hearing a band kind of do something close to that. So if you've never checked out this band, I strongly recommend checking this one out, especially. I need to get more of their stuff, obviously, but this is a solid album and you should check it out. Heaven's Cry, Food for Thought Substitute. 
This is the debut album from this Montreal progressive metal band that features Pierre St. John, formerly of Voivod, on guitars and vocals. He actually played bass in Voivod for a time. Now this originally came out in 1996 though, this is the 2013 reissue on Prosthetic Records. And actually this was my first exposure to him. Uh, the record store guy that sold this to me pretty much said, hey, if you like really cool progressive metal, then check this out. And he was right. I liked it. This is very much in the vein of Dream Theater, Control Denied, very thrashy and very heavy. Loads of wild instrumentation. The musicianship on here is top-notch, absolutely amazing. There's a nice heavy thrash influence on here on a good chunk of this. In fact, some of it actually kind of reminded me of Anacrusis, except with more keyboards. Though, it has less keyboards than I would say Dream Theater does. So this is actually very guitar-centric. The keyboards don't overwhelm, and the vocals are pretty solid on here. Actually, the first track, Your God's Crime, as soon as I heard the vocals, like, man, he almost sounds like Dave Mustaine, except cleaner and not as angry. This album flows very well, which I think is a really cool thing going for more like traditional prog. The songs kind of blend seamlessly into one another and with that sort of classic sound because there are some fierce nods to, again, Fate's Warning and Queensryche and, you know, the old guard of prog metal and kind of has this cool peaks and valleys thing that I really loved about this album. This isn't about wankery and just showing off. I mean, that is kind of a thing in prog and you kind of want to do that a bit, but this is more about songwriting. The songs March and Face are absolutely killer and, again, well-written. You have tons of spots for solos and lots of cool intricate bridges, but it never takes away from the song. It never feels like it's too much. It actually serves the song pretty much at all points. And then the really cool funky bass line on the Horde. I could not get that out of my head. This is a killer album. I need to get more of their stuff, but this is a hell of a way to start off. And this album is produced very well. Now granted, this is a remaster, but I did jam the original, and the original was actually mastered by a young Jens Bogren, so a guy that's pretty well known in metal circuits for doing really, really solid production. This is one of the early ones from him, and he did a killer job. No real surprise there. So if you have never heard of this band, I strongly recommend check them out and start here. This is a solid debut. This is a great kickoff point. I need to check out their later stuff, but I can attest that this one absolutely whoops ass and you should check it out. Astra, The Black Chord. This is the second album from the San Diego based prog rock, psychedelic rock, space rock band. This is probably the least metal one on here, but I wanted to bring it up because this is a really interesting release. Now this came out in 2012 on Rise Above Records and Metal Blade, so I guess it was issued on both labels. And this is the big trip in the Wayback Machine. Like this goes back to like Yes and Hawkwind and maybe some like proto-metal sort of stuff like Uriah Heep. These guys love pretty much all things analog. We have those big Hammond organ giant synths like Emerson, Lake, and Palmer, the very long, drawn out sort of proggy jams, and it's awesome. They execute the sound brilliantly on here. I love the spacey atmosphere on here. Like you were just kind of drawn in on this and the production being this more analog sound, it just feels absolutely classic. Now I imagine, of course, that was probably the goal there and way to go. You nailed it. It has that sound 100%. But some of it is kind of comparable to at least where Opeth is right now, which that's probably the closest more metal comparison I can make. I guess they're still metal. I don't know. I don't care. Opeth's still good. Now there are some definite nods to, I think, some of their influences. Barefoot in the head almost sounds like Pink Floyd's Have a Cigar. It's very close. I don't know if that's a deliberate nod or not, but uh, they might owe him a sandwich. And then Quake Meat is really interesting because it brings in what sounds like horns, but I think that's an effect in the keyboards. But all in all, this is a very immersive, trippy listen. And again, not necessarily heavy, just kind of like heavy in its own kind of way. That sort of, again, proto-metal sound, like if this came out in the 70s, like, oh my God, this is gonna conjure the devil or some bullshit. It won't, but it's awesome. Now I still need to pick up more by this band. There is an album of theirs I'm missing. I just picked this up forever ago and I jammed it and remember really liking it and then actually going back to it, I liked it even more. So I had to bring this one up even though it's not necessarily that metal, but yeah, definitely check this out. 
it's a solid album. Alchemist, Austral Alien. This is the fifth album from this Australian prog band. This came out on Relapse Records in 2003. And I believe I got a copy of this in the Metalhead box, though I had been listening to this band for years, actually courtesy of Relapse's Contaminated series. The song First Contact was actually, I believe, on Contaminated 3. The green cover with the smoking dude or whatever the hell was on it. But yeah, I heard that song and I was really hooked on the sound. And when I finally got a chance to jam it online, I just never got around to getting it. I got it in the metalhead box. I was like, oh my God, I finally have this album that I've been meaning to pick up. I just haven't. And this is one of the most interesting ones in this entire stack, I would say. This is kind of just unique. It's really hard to describe. The closest thing I could compare it to was like a more progressive sounding killing joke. Now these guys started off as more progressive death metal, but the more they kind of ventured into proggy territory, the weirder they got. And I think that really just sort of kind of opened the floodgates in terms of creativity for this band because these songs are strange. There's lots of clean passages and acoustic passages. There's kind of like a industrial metal vibe on some of this. I mean, again, that opening track, First Contact, you hear these droning cleans mixed with these kind of hardcore shouts. It really does scream killing joke. The keyboards on here are very strange. It's not like very traditional, like keyboard passage you hear in prog rock. It's almost kind of like just weird soundscapes and such. And like samples, again, kind of has that 90s industrial feel to it. And the fact that this all sort of blends together in its own unique way, like the songwriting is, I don't know, it's kind of hard to describe. It's very strange, like you have fiercely metal moments, but you also have these sort of like twangy alternative moments. It kind of reminds me of like Voivod, just in terms of like their approach. Like we don't want to sound like anyone else, we're gonna sound like Voivod. I think that was the mission statement with Alchemist on this one. Hell, the song Epsilon almost sounds like spacey Dire Straits. It's a strange album, and honestly, if this had come out in 1994 or 93, this might have been on the Crow soundtrack. It's weird enough to fit. It kind of has a little bit of that gothic atmosphere, and I don't know. It is hard to describe this album, but I know I love it, and I know you should definitely check it out, especially if you want something that is progressive metal that is kind of thinking outside of the box. It's strange. It's unique. Unfortunately, this band is no longer around, which is sad. I got their last album, Tripsis, and I absolutely love that one. And I thought about bringing up that one, but this was where I first heard them. So this album is a little bit more relevant in terms of why I got into this band. So yeah, if you've never jammed Alchemist, check them out. It's hard to describe, but trust me, it's a wild listen. And if you like prog that is outside of the box, definitely check it out. Temple, the moon lit our path. This is the second album from this Phoenix-based two-man instrumental prog band. And I hadn't jammed this in years. I remembered liking it when I heard it and jamming again. I absolutely love it. And I'm kicking myself for not listening to this more often and not getting their first album. This is hard to describe. It's all instrumental. And this really just kind of runs the gamut of styles. You have what sounds like a fiercely down-tuned seven string guitar on here, but it's not like a genty tone. You have death metal on here, you have thrash metal on here, you have sludge metal, you have post metal, you even have black metal. The songs Descending Into the Labyrinth and Dawn Breaks Over the Ruins, both being the longest songs in here, both of them over 12 minutes long, have pronounced black metal sections that sort of come out of nowhere because the first track, Carvings in the Door, actually kind of starts off almost like groove metal with big heavy breakdowns, but this kind of just goes every place and it succeeds at every place that it ventures to, which is awesome. Tons of atmosphere in here. You get like dreamy, shoegazy, tremolo parts, giant epic melodies. Again, Dawn Breaks Over the Ruins. The closing melody on that is simply epic. And the songwriting across the board on literally every track is remarkable. This is literally a prog album that you can put on. You can get a little bit of everything from virtually every heavy genre. And I absolutely love it for that because again, the transitions are great. It has a uniform sound, but you can tell when they're going for it, like a different sort of mode on there. And they absolutely nail it every time. 
Again, I hadn't listened to this in a while, and maybe back in 2015, I just wasn't hooked on this or didn't jam it enough, but coming back to it now, this resonates with me even more. Maybe it took me getting more into Russian circles and stuff like that to get into this even more, I don't know. But something definitely awoken to me when I would listen to this one again and I remembered what a badass album this is. So if you've never jammed this album, I strongly recommend it if you love instrumental music in general and just well-constructed songs that just flow beautifully. Definitely check this out. It's a great long jam too. I mean, all these songs are pretty damn long. So yeah, just get lost in it, jam it. It's amazing. I gotta check out their first one still. I need to pick that one up eventually. If it's as good as this, then I need it. So yeah, definitely check this out. Mantric, The Descent. This is their debut album, came out in 2010 on Prosthetic Records. And this was essentially the continuation of Extol. Now Extol broke up in 2007 and two of its founding members actually formed this band. Now Extol has since reformed and then gone into hiatus, so who knows what's going on there. But Mantric is still very much around and this pretty much was a more proggy version of Extol. Now Extol definitely had lots of progressive elements. That band kind of went all over the place, starting off as more you know, progressive death metal or just flat out death metal into sort of proggy territory, melodic death metal, metalcore. It all kind of blended itself. You still get a lot of that on here except with more progressive elements. Wilder song arrangements, though I think the thing that really carried over is the fact that the songs are a bit shorter in here. They still don't have the super long songs that you would expect from Prague. In fact, the longest song in here, Spear of Heaven, isn't necessarily that long when you take off the long, weird outro on here. Now, again, this sort of takes this style of melodic death metal, metalcore, and a little bit of traditional straightforward death metal and mixes in Prague and does a really good job. You get a good balance of harsh and clean vocals. There's a lot of sort of crazy, frantic metalcore. It's not like, you know, Kill Switch Engage or As I Lay Dying. This is more along the lines of Converge and Norma Jean with just progressive elements. And it's nuts, but it's actually really good. I like the weird off-time drumming, the riffs that kind of are strange and angular and come in at odd points, because I think that's the idea in this album. It's supposed to be odd and challenging listen, you know, much like most prog is, but this is just kind of out of left field and maybe throws in a little bit of that sort of avant-garde, like, ah, I don't know what we're doing, this feels improv, but it's not, we actually wrote this. That sort of feel. You get a little bit of that on here. This album kind of comes across as scattershot and all over the place, but there is a cool unifying feel to it, and it's a strange, challenging listen. And I kind of look for that in Prague, and I definitely got that here. Now, these guys are still around, though this is the only album I own by them. That may have to change because coming back to this, I really enjoyed it. Some of the long outros were odd and the weird vocal cadences can be hard to get into. But overall, this is a solid album and if you're looking for prog that has metalcore and melodic death metal elements, which I don't think I really brought up on this list yet until this one, definitely check this out. It's wild and it's crazy, but it's a lot of fun. Check it out. And finally we have three. Wake Pig. This originally came out in 2004, though this is the 2005 reissue by Metal Blade. This was the third album from this New York band that featured Joey Eppard on guitars and vocals, who is the brother of Josh Eppard, the drummer of Coheed and Cambria. And these two bands are pretty comparable. Though I have to say, I think this band is easier to get into, at least on the vocal standpoint. I like what Claudio can do, but sometimes his vocals are a bit much. Joey on here finds a more accessible and wild range in there, and this is a little bit darker and stranger. Like, there's something more upbeat and kind of uh, nice about Coheed and Cambria. This is darker, a little bit heavier, and they use extra percussion and keyboards on here really effectively. In fact, the synths are just strange on here, but my god. The songwriting in here is fantastic. The blend of, you know, just regular chunky heavy metal guitars and then these really cool acoustic passages, which Joey's flamenco slap style, my God, especially with the song Brahm Fatura. It's just an interlude. It's a minute 40, but it's some of my favorite acoustic playing. 
in my collection. I just jammed it not too long before I actually did this just to hear it again just because it's an absolutely beautiful piece. But that's also kind of scattered all over here too. You hear these really pretty acoustic melodies across this and just excellent vocal work. The songwriting is unique. It's kind of Faith No More-ish, I guess, in terms of the songs are varied. They have very different feels from song to song. Occasionally you get some heavier, darker ones like the opening track, Alien Angel, which still has an absolutely gorgeous chorus on it. And then you get songs like One Way Town, which sounds like progressive cheap trick. It kind of has this power pop feel to it. But, you know, all those prog elements are there. This band, though I think they're one of the more well-known ones on this list, kind of lived in Coheed's shadow quite a bit. Not as many people really knew about them, even though I think they were just as good, if not better. They were able to blend as many elements as Coheed, if not more, and I think it kind of came across as a more wide-reaching listen. Now, I'm unsure if this band's still around or they're on hiatus, but I would love to hear more from them. These guys were absolutely amazing musicians. I would love to hear more work from them. But if you've not jammed these guys, this is a great starting point. I recommend pretty much any of their albums, but I would say start here. This is an absolute banger of an album. I think it's underappreciated, and I think you all should check it out, of course. All right, well, that knocks out another one of these. I don't know what I'm gonna do next. I've been toying with the idea of doing a new metal list in terms of underrated albums or ones I still get into. Uh, I need to go back and listen to them to see if I actually still do get into them, though. And there's still some other stuff I'd like to go over, like more stoner metal or doom metal or death metal, of course, because I'm always collecting death metal and I think there's tons of underappreciated bands there. But I am definitely going to return to this at some point, but I definitely wanted to touch on prog because we hadn't really touched on prog very much at all. So if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And if you are new to the channel, subscribe because we do stuff like this all the time. We are also on Patreon, so if you'd like to help us out there, there is a link below in the description. We plan on uploading more stuff soon, so stay tuned there. And we also have a giveaway going on. Once we hit 6,000 subs, we're going to give away a nice bundle of four CDs. We are over the 5,700 mark, so we are getting there. If you have not commented on that video, there is a link below in that comment, and you were entered in there. It should be playing automatically on our channel as well, but I'm going to leave the link to it anyway, as well as links to all the music, because that's the important part here. So with that, I thank you all for watching, and we will catch you later.